Hello, um, welcome to Illini Sports Night. I'm Alec Vajena. I'm Joey Lagatuda. And this is Making the Point. Um, today we're going to be discussing the issue of if should Pee Wee football be banned. Joey, what are your thoughts on this? Well, for me, uh, this might be one of the easiest decisions of all time. And I'll tell you why. They need to ban tackling in Pee Wee football. And there's one main factor that contributes to all this. It's the brain. The brain, we all know, it's the most important part of the body. And when you're younger, you, your brain you, is still developing. But you, the brain is not fully developed until about the age of 25. And with football, you're in trouble. We all know about CTE, right? Chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Many professional football players suffer from it. But the youths, the youths of America who I'm trying to protect right now, it's even worse for them. According to Dr. Ann McKee, from, who's the chief neurologist at Boston University, very prestigious, she says that because the young athletes' brain are still developing, the effects of a concussion or even smaller hits throughout the season are far more detrimental compared to that of an older player. And these younger players can experience symptoms of brain disease like cognitive impairment or mood swings earlier in life. Now, like I said, I want to protect the America's youths. These youths, I need to protect them. And there are so many ways that we can do this. How about, um, I don't know, flag football. There's actually been an increased popularity in flag football throughout the years, moving from 2.8% of the youths participating in 2012 all the way up to 33 in 2017, almost the opposite for tackle football, which has seen a decrease. Well, those are some interesting points, Joey, but you've got to take in consideration the benefits that come from playing PB football. Physical fitness is one of them. Kids nowadays rather spend their time inside watching YouTube, playing video games, which leads to an unhealthy life. So by providing kids with this lifestyle of being fit condition provides for a healthy life right now and a healthy life later on in life. Some other benefits that come from it is social skills. Social skills are very useful in life. Um, kids are provided with the opportunity to speak with one another, talk to their teammates, learn about winning culture what it is to be in an environment such that provides teamwork and needs teamwork to be successful. Um, there's like a lot of skills that they're being used. They're using their, their mortar skills, basically hands, feet, basically learning how to like use them very well, which provides for a healthy lifestyle. And one of the most important skills is also experience. They are learning how to tackle young, how to run plays very young, which provides for an easier life later on if they want to consider playing football in high school. They're already going to know like the lifestyle, the, the culture, how it is to tackle, how it is to run plays and everything. So they shouldn't be worrying about it later on. You know, you, you bring up some good points, but I'm going to have to oppose them, and here's why. You can build all sorts of different social skills in numerous different ways. It doesn't even have to be with sports anyway. You can join a club or be in the theater and other sports as well. Now, a similar comparison to football a lot is ice hockey. And with ice hockey, you're not allowed to check before the age of 13. And looking at the pros right now, I'd say a lot of them have developed that skill fairly quickly, and they didn't need to learn it when they were a lot younger. Also, with baseball, they don't start, kids don't start pitching when they're six years old. You start off with t-ball, right? Then you work your way up. You go to the coach pitch. You learn from there, then the kid pitch. And then once you're in high school, that's when you start to see these kids pitching. And it's that development of the game that we see with other sports that we can utilize in football. Also, I'm not sure if you knew this or not, but Tom Brady didn't even play tackle football when he was younger. And he's the GOAT. So if he doesn't need it, who knows if anyone else does. Also, Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh, he suggests that kids, instead of playing football when they're younger, they play soccer. You can learn, learn similar team building skills and motor skills with soccer without risking injury. So you, I see one of your points is that – the, your concern about injuries, but there's a lot of things that are they're helping to prevent these injuries. Equipment's evolving every day. They're designed to protect the athlete from getting hurt. Um, kids are also, like I brought up earlier, kids are learning how to tackle to keep themselves safe and their opponents safe. Um, and there's also this organization called Heads Up Football, which is designed for these kids. Well, it's an organization designed for the kids to learn how to be safe and it provides them with the opportunities with skills to prevent like concussion protocols and everything. So there's a bunch of things that they're doing to protect these kids. They're helping them like 
not get hurt. So tackle football shouldn't really be concerned because they are learning skills later on early in life. So there wouldn't be a concern later on. Well, there would there shouldn't be a concern later on in life. So it's gonna provide for a safe culture when they're older. All right, y'all. Well, that's all the time we have. This has been Alana Sports Night making a point. I'm Joey Lagatuda. And I'm Alex Bahena. We'll see you next time.